As you all know, model railroading, they're always distractions. I was meant to be doing scenery, but I got stuck on signals. So let's see what I've been doing. Hi, welcome to episode 22 of my series of building a new model railroad. My name is Peter Borchards and I'm the owner of BNSF Chicago Sub in N scale. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and click on that little bell icon to be notified of all my upcoming episodes. This is just a quick update on what I've done since my last video. I now said I was going to start in the scenery, but I've, as, as usual um, with most people, I got sidetracked and I started installing the signals. In an earlier video, I showed you how I built the Showcase Miniature Signal Bridge, and I've now added the signal heads onto this bridge. So far, I've wired two of the heads up, and in this video, I'm going to show you how they function. I've connected them to my Digitrax SE8C signal system, and I've also connected them via the computer to the CATS dispatcher system, and I'll give you a demonstration of how it works when I set a route um, on the CATS system and how it actually shows up on the signal system itself. I've got it set up as CTC and I'll show you how that all works and how it interacts with the signals on the actual layout itself. So let's get started with the short demo. So this is the first signal bridge on the layout and this is at the top of the helix. So the direction of Chicago is east in that direction and that goes down the helix. You can just see the helix going down over here. And it's the first signal bridge you get to when you get to the top of the helix. Now, um, I've just wired two signal heads on this one for now. Um, the top signal head is for the main one west, which goes straight through. The bottom signal head is for the uh, main one west diverging, which goes into the Western Avenue yard, uh, so into the yard lead. And that is what I've got is wired up for now. Um, I've got three more signal heads on here. I've got the main one east on the other side. And then on the right hand side, I've got the main one, I mean, sorry, the main two east and west. And they um, are single signal heads because there's no diverging um, routes before the next signal bridge. So let me give you a demonstration of how it works. I'm using the CATS um, dispatcher system um, created by Rodney Black, which is an overlay over JMRI. And I've set it up so this signal will work automatically via CTC. And I will just show you how this all works now. So on the screen now, you can see my dispatcher panel. Um, you've got the lower yards over here. So this is your freight yard down at the lower level staging. And this is the metro yard down at um, also lower level. And on the left here, this is the helix. I might um, have it displayed differently on my final panel, but this is just so I've got it set up for now so I can see what's happening. And you can see each individual block is labeled as well. I've got uh, four blocks, actually five blocks on the helix. Now this is up at the top. So we've got the main tracks over here. I've actually labeled these incorrectly. These, it should be the other way around. So we've got main one at the front, the main two, main three, main four. Um, this is the Western Avenue lead coming into the Western Avenue yard and it's only detected as far as here. There's no detection in the yard itself. So let me give you a demonstration of the signals. Now, as you can see here, I've got no route set at the moment. So I'm going to set the signal and because there's no other signal over here yet, the um, signal will only go to yellow. I will not get a green on this. So let me set the route and let's see what happens on the signal bridge. So now you can see on the dispatcher panel, we've got a green route all the way through and it's showing that the yellow, the signal is yellow. So if we look at the signal itself, you'll see that the top head is yellow, which is correct. So let us run a train through it, a locomotive through it and see what happens to the signal. Now, if everything's working correctly, this should change to red. And there we go, we've got a red signal that shows that the route ahead is occupied. So that is working correctly. And you'll see on the dispatcher panel as well, the signals change to red and you can see the occupation, the occupied track in red with the selected route in green ahead. And you can see the tracks changing, the occupation changing as the locomotive moves through. I'm gonna set a diverging route. So I'm gonna set it into the Western Avenue lead. So I'm gonna change the point 
So now that we've got the turnout set, we don't have any further signals here yet, so it will only show me as far as yellow, and also it's because I don't have any detection further on. So um, the most it's going to show me is a yellow, it will never show me a green. It might show a flashing yellow. At the moment I need to obviously just look into look into the different signal indications and um, get an understanding on what sh which signal indications show when. So I think this one will actually show a flashing yellow. So let's see what happens when I set this route. So here it shows a yellow and this shows a green, green route. So it shows me I've got it cleared through. And on the signal head, you'll see there on the bottom, on the diverging signal, I've got a flashing yellow. So that shows me I've got a route through as far as this point over here. And let's see what, I, what happens when I set the train through there. So let's get this rolling again. You can see as we go past, changes to red. So that's all working correctly as well, which is great. I think it's not great is the locomotive has stopped. Okay, so I've just got an issue with that turnout. I need to train, um, check the, the wiring on that. And now I'm going to move the camera over to the signal that's coming out of the Western Avenue yard onto the main, and I'll show you what that one does. So here is the signal that protects the movements from the Western Avenue yard lead onto the main track. They show at the moment it's, as you can see at the moment, it's showing red. So now I'm going to set a route over here. Let me just clear this route. So now we should have a yellow showing on the signal. I'll just go over and check it. And yes, we've got a yellow showing. Now just to show you what happens on the panel, you can see at the moment I haven't set this route over here, so it's only been cleared as far as this signal, which is the signal on the signal bridge, which I haven't lit up yet, but the signal is there. You see at the moment it shows yellow. If I set this one, this route through, you can see this one now changes, this route is now cleared all the way through to the first level of the helix. This signal goes yellow because I haven't cleared it any further than this at the moment. But this one is now changed to green. So now if I check on the signal itself, it has changed green. That's great. Now let me move the locomotive through and let's see what happens. And there we go. We've got a red signal. Again, I've just got issues with the turnout, so let's just move that through. Okay. So that is working as expected. It took me a while to figure out which connections to use on the TSMKs, but I'm glad to see it is all working as it should do. So that was a nice distraction. At least I've got some working signals, which is great. I'm gonna wire up the, the rest of the signal heads. I've got three more signal heads to wire up on that signal itself, on that signal bridge itself. Um, and then I can get that signal bridge completed and I can get on with the rest of the layout. I'm also going to start planning the first bit of scenery, which is the um, residential and industrial area just in front of the Western Avenue Yard, or just before the Western Avenue Yard. I'm going to get that all planned out, um, work out the measurements, work out where the road's going to go, um, and I'm using Google Street Maps and the satellite view to get an idea of what I want to get, um, what I want to have in that area and um, obviously compress it to fit in with the, the area I've got available. So I'll be documenting that and it'll come up in a later video. Be sure to click on the subscribe button down below and click on that little bell icon to be sure that you don't miss any upcoming episodes. So in the meantime, thank you for watching, happy modeling and see you soon.